a few slides, and they're just text, so they're really boring, so we shouldn't spend any time on them, of course. Um, BDL and I have been building a bunch of embedded little computers. I have some examples up here. You can look at them if you like. Lots of them. You want to look at some embedded computers? <laughs> yeah, they're really cheap. Um, here's a computer with the power of the, uh, of the uh, LEM lander when it landed the Apollo on the moon. It cost me 80 cents. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are we building? We're building a bunch of tiny embedded devices. Uh, we're using a bunch of different processors. That one uses a, uh, uh, that one uses a uh, ARM processor, Cortex-M3 uh, by STM. Um, I have some more here. I think I flung them all. That use the Cortex-M0 processor. Um, they're embedded processors. They are not what, what most people think of as an ARM processor. They can't run a telephone. They can barely run a remote control. Um, these devices have very little memory. Uh, the biggest one that we've used in the product is 128 k bytes of flash. Um, they didn't have a file system until a couple of months ago when I decided I was going to build a product with a micro SD card, so I put a fat file system in them. Um, they do not run Linux. We're not ever planning on running anything like Linux. We're not even barely planning on running an operating system. What I want for an embedded ARM development environment is something that looks very much like the GCC AVR system or SDCC or even, as I learned this week was a good simile, the Ming GW environment, where you're building an application on Debian that runs in a completely separate environment. It has nothing to do with Debian as its target. Debian is just the build environment. Uh, the current tool chain that we're using came from the Summon ARM tool chain. I was, it's basically a script on top of a bunch of tarballs of upstream snapshots. Uh, so they snapshotted bin utils, they snapshotted GCC, they snapshotted um, the GNU loader and the GDB, and they built this uh, shell script that compiled all of them and did a pretty good job of putting together a usable tool chain. This works great on the Cortex M3. It doesn't build uh, correct binaries for the Cortex M0, but it was a really good start. It gave us an idea of what the system was going to be like. Uh, we built a script that takes this tool chain and installs it in slash opt. It's not a Debian package, so we put it in slash opt. And that's what we've been building all of our stuff on. It works fine. Um, more recently, well, in the last year or so, um, Linaro started putting together a uh, snapshots of a Cortex-M tool chain um, at this URL here. So you can actually get a Cortex-M tool chain here. This one works great on the M3 and the M0, so it's definitely an improvement. Uh, Linaro has been pushing their patches upstream. I don't know, because I haven't had time to look, how many of these patches are still not in upstream GCC? They have a commitment to getting everything upstream. I don't know how, how complete it is. Uh, the other thing that we're using is we're trying to use a tiny C library. And the C library that we're using now is not newlib, it's pdclib, the public domain C library, which is the smallest C library I've seen, and it definitely strives for reuse of code and easy to understand functions. And from a porting perspective, it's awesome. It took me about a couple of hours to get it running in our environment. From a C library implementation perspective, it really kind of sucks. But, well, for instance, the printf code. This is awesome, right? You want to print an integer. Well, the PDC lib code, the only integers that can print are 64 bits. So it casts everything to a 64-bit integer and does everything at 64-bit ints. And of course, the actual printing function, well, the simplest to understand integer printing function is recursive. So it's sitting there recursing down the stack with about six 64-bit values being pushed and popped off the stack for every digit that it's going to print. And there's 64-bit numbers. So I got like a couple of k bytes of stack usage out of that on my four kilobytes of RAM processor. And not so, not so good. So libc is really the problem from I don't know what libc to use. Um, SDCC and GCC AVR both have a native libc. When you get SDCC or you get libc, uh, GCC AVR, they come with a libc that's kind of suitable for their environments. SDCC in particular has this heavily optimized, lots of assembly code libc uh, that's kind of a marvel of 8051 assembly code. Horror show? Marvel? Um, for ARM, 
I don't know what to do. I'm using PDC like PDC lib right now because it was really easy to get it working. It's totally unoptimized. It uses a lot of stack space. It's very small. It's very portable, and I didn't have any trouble getting it working. Uh, the Summon ARM toolchain and the Lanaro stuff both use, both use Newlib as their C library. And the trouble that I had with Newlib was it was enormous. It took like kilobytes of space on my embed. Yep. So if you want to save space, uh, are you doing a link time optimization so that like the functions in the C library that you don't call get stripped away? I am not doing that. No, I assume that the I assume that the library was built so that file level linking would be sufficient to get just the code I use. Maybe that's not true. Okay. Even for static linking. Even for static linking, I would have thought it would just pick the, uh, sorry, the uh, dot. A's or whatever in the dot so, uh, no, the uh, dot O's and the dot A that are used. You need some specific options f to strip the things that you don't use. Okay, that's something definitely to look at. I really don't want to use link time optimization as it currently exists in GCC because it gets rid of all of your ability to debug applications. Have you tried? Uh, it gets it removes all of your debugging ability. You you can't get stack traces anymore. It's like. Seriously, you people think this is a great way to compile stuff? I just looked into doing, uh, Eric just looked into doing link time optimization in, in Mesa, and it's like, I can't support that. My users get no stack traces. To be fair, you can't necessarily have both, right? You either optimize to make it absolutely tiny or you make it debuggable. You can't have both. I, I would like, they're I, in direct contradiction. Yes, I understand. I would like it to at least get some semblance of a stack trace when a crash occurs. <laughs> throw away all the functions I'm not using, but leave the stack trace yeah. bit in. Yeah, exactly. Right. In any case, um, the other option, of course, is, is uh, UC, um, UC libc, uh, which is very Linux-based. It's, it's not exactly micro anymore. It's like a third the size of, of glibc at this point. I don't know. It's huge. Um, the other question is how we want to package libc for this environment. Right now, I'm just taking the Linaro bits and compiling them and sticking in slash opt. I could clearly just turn that into a Debian package pretty easily. Um, from a, a packager perspective, that seems kind of nice. I take an existing upstream that's maintained, and I put Debian P in it to make it taste like Debian and get it ready to install on Debian. What could be better than that? Well, the problem with that, of course, is that 99.9% .9 of the code in that package is already in our source tree in terms of the, the Debian GCC source package. So the question is, can I do something like MingGW, which takes the Debian GCC source as a, as a build dependency and installs that and then builds from that source? And if the Lenaro patches were all there, maybe that would work. Hello, am I on? Yeah, at the, uh, they are doing a pretty good job of upstreaming things. So it's usually what's in Debian is a bit behind. Right, uh, you know, a few months, which for your purposes probably doesn't matter very much. No, it doesn't matter. The question is, are these Cortex M patches that Lenaro are doing in a completely separate area also integrated? I think they probably are. So, D yeah, th th that's Christian, behind you, had a question. Uh, um, more for comment than a question. Um, I've tried um, coming from the from the other side, so taking what is currently there in the Debian archives, uh, working on Cortex M three devices as well. And with just some tuning of, compi of compilation options, I managed to use the cross compiler from, from Debian, which is basically G GCC, ARM, Linux, GNU, E, ABI, um, to run on Cortex M3 devices. Oh, very uh, cool. The only, the only thing that, uh, that was, was that I didn't get run was the all the basically all the GCC internal functions didn't work. So if you wanted to do anything that's, that's like 64 bit arithmetic. Uh, floating, floating point. point, anything like that. You, you can get, get the basic examples running, though. Yeah. OK, so that sounds like it, sounds like it might be You're pretty. Yeah, it's not that far apart. OK. Uh, so and the, yeah, last, I mean, the last comment I had is I was um, talking with uh, Doku, uh, Doku yesterday, or two days ago. I don't know. It's DebConf. It's all just a haze of beer-infested cheese eating. <laughs> I think I had about three pounds of cheese for lunch. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so the, the, what Doko's question was, is this just another architecture for multi-arch? And 
It looks a lot like multi-arch. You're doing cross-compilation, but it's really not multi-arch at all. And I think, I think Doko and I both agree that trying to do this in the multi-arch environment did not make any sense. Because if you accidentally ever include something from user include or user lib, you have failed. <laughs> Um, so we're going to install this like, clearly we're going to install this like GCC AVR, MingGW, SDCC. It's a cross-build environment solely. There's no multi-arch stuff here. Now, if multi-arch gets even more complicated and gets to the point where cross-compilation is just multi-arch, then maybe we can consider changing it. But mm. Way on. So cross-compilation is just multi-arch already. No, no, that's yep. uh, But the problem is C libraries. Right. So... Yep. Uh, the Ming W people have exactly the same problem. Right. That they have a non-POSIX C library, right. and we go, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> we can fix that. So we can change things so that you don't assume a POSIX C library, uh, right. and move things around. But the the question is the degree to which you actually use system libraries at all, right? You yeah, you not at you all. You don't want libc, and you probably don't want many of the others either. No, none of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, it, you know, it, on it the other hand, uh, the Slind people had this working in 2005. They did uh, a dpackage architecture, which was uc libc blah, uh, and that worked fine. And as, as I was amazed to find someone was still using it like, this week. And you go, that's seven years old that release. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. You could do that, um, and, and the advantage is that you get to use exactly the same toolchain and all the build foo and all the other stuff. It's, it becomes a standard cross-compile. Right. And the question is, is that more aggravation than having to build your own toolchain with some different options? I no, think no, no. so, because the last thing I want to do is create .devs. I'd have no need for devs. I thought you wanted a package toolchain. Oh, I want a package toolchain, but my, uh, the, the, uh, when I have the toolchain, I don't want to build devs with that toolchain. Right. Uh, <laughs> but that has very little to do with your toolchain. I mean, toolchains build code, right? right. Pa packaging is totally separate. From I don't. But I, what I'm saying is, I don't need all the packaging tools on top of the toolchain that help us create. Yeah, but you don't get. I don't need autoconf. I don't need. Yeah, but packaging yeah. and how you build stuff is totally yeah. separate from how is your toolchain packaged. Right. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying that taking advantage of the multi arch stuff would make packaging the toolchain a lot easier. Yeah, and, and all your tools work the same as they did before. For right. If you did need, you know, if you wanted to, to get a little bit bigger, because this is all M3 is tiny right now, right? Yep. But, you know, the, oh, I know the, what happens. It, this used to be 8-bit pick world, and you're already, now you've got an enormous 32-bit processor, and it won't be long before you've got a 64-bit one. Just watch. And, uh, you know, uh, and people go, oh, actually, it would be handy if I could use this little library. And, and Right. And so, so that's, that's why I wanted to hold this buff largely, was to say, you know, we, we're moving from this GCC, AVR, SCCC world into a larger ARM world. Does it make sense to continue using their model? And what do you think? Uh, did you actually look at how G GCC, AVR works and is packaged? Because no, I just used it. Yeah, I think it's, it puts files everywhere. I mean, it's there's no consistency whatsoever, and so I think that putting this uh, ARM cross compiler in the standard um, framework of multi arch may be a bit more consistent with the rest of the system. I, th I yeah, I uh, yeah, it certainly would be more consistent. The question is, do I want to do that, or do I want to just hide it in some directory? I mean, we have a we have a directory and a. a we have a, a file system specification, and just dumping things into a package specific directory would be pretty easy. The AVR compiler doesn't respect that <laughs> specification. Okay, maybe not understand. a good example. <laughs> He's lost his train of thought. Have um, uh, no. <laughs> doesn't help at all, does it? Okay. Uh, into a microphone. find it again. Yeah, I, w um, I would say that uh, if you look at it from a sort of just a tool chain point of view, cross-compiling or multi-arch is in the end just whether you stick your stuff in slash user slash target or slash user slash lib slash target. And I think it would be nice to have, and then when you do the sort of Debian multi-arch stuff, you also add user include to your path. Yep. Um, but from a sort of just sort of 
cons consistency point of view, it would be nice to just have everything in user lib target. So the multi art style, even if your own toolchain doesn't add the user include bit. Uh, plus, the user target stuff isn't actually FHS compliant. <laughs> no, it, it would clearly go in user but share target or user lib target. Yeah. Yeah, user, yeah. So that then that's basically just multi arch minus the user include stuff. Yep. Was the someone turn the mic off? Um, the you can use sysroot as well as multi arch, right? So you build the compiler just like all the others, and you can still use dash dash sysroot, put all my stuff in a different bucket. Yep. Um, which may make a lot of sense for this context, just because you're not doing package building and you're just putting random crap which you want to build against. Uh, you know, you're not necessarily packaging your PDC lib in a conventional way. This is the question is, do we want to do that? Um, so, you know, you ha just because you use all the standard um, toolchain building foo doesn't mean you can't also do sysroot building. We have both. Uh, and I believe that all works, uh, but it's not very well tested at this stage <laughs> because <laughs> we're all doing distro building, so we yep. don't use the sysroot stuff. Right. Uh, and uh, like him, I, I've always just used the standard uh, compilers to build uh, non libc stuff like bootloaders and things and actually that works fine so long as you never put a print f in at which point your your binary gets 250k bigger uh, and well and <laughs> use it and 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 starts calling functions that i don't have any ability to implement like read that's right um, but so you know it's not difficult it is nice if you get a bare metal tool i'm, I'm not sure how much difference it actually makes using a bare metal toolchain versus a nominally built against libc toolchain with just libc turned off? Quite a bit, actually. The, the non ABI uh, target in GCC is dramatically different than the than Linux ABI toolchain. And in, in terms of the interface to the internal uh, G -lib, uh, GCC library itself, for it's completely different. I, I haven't investigated enough to know why it's different or how it's different. But I do know that I was completely unable to get anything working with a Linux targeting ARM compiler that putatively output M3 code. You said you got something working. Uh, yeah, basically the only thing where I got stuck was um, that all the functions in, this, in the standard C library uh, were uh, ARM32 ARM code instead of thumb code. So you, you had a BX instruction, yep. and then the 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 the, the cortex said uh, no way. So if we could, if I think the the mul that's so so one GCC of the key GCC issues one. there is that yeah. you have, anytime you're, you're building things with GCC, you have GCC lib under the hood. And right. if you have yeah. a compiler which is targeting a Linux glibc architecture, uh, it assumes it knows something about the, the actual hardware you're targeting as well as that it can rely on glibc being present for the final linking. And so you end up with a lib GCC which does not let you do what you think you asked it for if you're using a, a Linux targeted uh, compiler. Yeah, the point is that libgcc is built using some particular code. So as soon as you include any, if you actually link against it, then you get code for possibly Math the functions. wrong thing. So one of the things that Simon Richter did years ago was uh, just replace libgcc for a UC libc one. Um, and that, that was the use UC libc, that package nobbled your libgcc to what you wanted. Uh, and that works, which is quite. Yeah, so I mean, there's potential here for figuring out how to be more efficient about taking your compiler, which supports everything, and figuring out how to drop in the, the GCC lib that you need, the, the lib GCC bits for, for whatever you're targeting, and, and, and supporting that a bit more dynamically, having that package separately. I think there's room for improvement here. We haven't really gone down that road at all. Yeah. I mean, it would actually improve our lives greatly if libgcc wasn't so closely tied to the GCC build, because it's, this, it's this a actually also in lots of ways. This also ties into like some of the biarch problems and why biarch remains a, a thorn in our side even in the multi-arch world, because it's not, it's not sufficient to just take um, y your, your AMD64 compiler and say, oh, well, I want to build for 32-bit unless you also have 32-bit glibc somewhere, and the natively built 32-bit glibc doesn't quite line up in all the right ways, both pathwise and I think some of the contents as the as the one you would get from a, a biarch build. So it's there's a lot of complexity there. Um, with regards to multi-arch, I wanted to say though that the thing that makes multi-arch compelling, aside from having a very pretty um, uh, uh, elegant file system layout, which of course we all know and love, but th but that's not really a good reason to, to in, in and of itself to change how you're building your compiler. Th the thing that really makes multi-arch compelling is the fact that you do your native build for the library, and then it 
gives you everything you need to do cross builds, and it, it's the same package on both native and cross, and you're just installing it in different ways, and you are um, you're, you're installing it on a foreign architecture, and you're making use of that as as part of the build environment, but you don't have to rebuild any of your libraries. If you're targeting bare metal, that's less compelling. Right. Yeah, there is there is no there is no native environment here. It's just a, a cross environment. Right, and so so from that point of view, it's uh, I'm not sure it's worth the added effort to get your compiler to do multi-arch correctly, because I don't know that we actually have all of that entirely upstreamed. Uh, our, our GCC package putatively does multi-arch correctly. The, the GCC package does, but and I don't so know how much of that is upstream. But if you're, if you're basing off the GCC package and relying on that as a, as a base, then that Right, and the question is, does our current GCC package have the, have the code necessary to comp compile Cortex-M3 and M0 targets? To compile to, to right. M3 targets. We just need some way to specify another another compi compiled form of the of the glib. So I think the uh, the the summon arm tool chain thing um, does something like multilib. No, the summon arm tool chain doesn't That's actually have multiple target support. The summon one of that was one of the bugs in the summon arm tool chain is it, it you you hard coded whether it was an M zero M three uh, compiler, and that it built the whole tool chain for that particular set. The Linaro the Linaro tool chain does support both. It does have multi lib support in it. So I was a, so if, so with the Linaro tool chain, I have separate PD Clib libraries for M zero and M three because they are different architectures. Uh, I just have a question about this uh, libc problem. I mean, you have PD Clib, you have new lib. I'm not sure you can switch between the two with the same compiler because some bits of the compiler are really. Um, Intricate with the libc. Yeah, I as noticed as I that know. in GCC. I, so what I'm doing now is I'm building the tool chain, and the tool chain build uses new lib. And then when I build my application, I just throw away the new lib part and use PDC lib, and it seems to work fine. Isn't that linking much less of a problem in a um, non? environment than it is in a because I think it's just I think it's just the code that ends up in libgcc that is uh, effectively related to which C library you how we're using for the target environment and I don't know how what that relationship is does anybody know <laughs> uh, it's, it's <laughs> other like than being incestuous yeah those, those, those functions have to be in a particular form uh, you know they've got interfaces to things and they've got code that they're in uh, and so the problem with GCC design for all these nice things we want to do is that they've always gone, well, you build it for the stuff you want to build, right? And then we've had, you know, it, it was never designed to build a compiler that could do lots of things, uh, and then you choose at runtime which ones you want to do. It doesn't really want to support that, which right. is why all this is a bit painful. And multilib kind of gives you that, but there's still some assumptions. For for bare metal, actually, couldn't you just get away with a stage one GCC if you're just doing C? <laughs> well, no, you, you still need GCC lib because GCC lib contains all of the support for extended precision arithmetic and... Right, yeah, if you need that, then yeah. You always need that. But you get a static lib GCC when you build a stage one compiler. And at the moment, it doesn't include user include because I can't get it to. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if you build the one I've got at the moment, it's perfect for your purposes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so who else is, is using uh, M3 or M0 parts or trying to use Debian to do embedded ARM development? And Zumbi is as well. And Zumbi is as well? So there's, there's, like, there's like a handful of, full of us. What are you guys using? I know what you're using. You're using the M3 the regular ARM compiler, what are you using? Uh, I use the handmade script that basically does what summon ARM toolchain does. So. Okay. Actually, I do use summon ARM toolchain because um, <laughs> there, I can strip the code down to, the, to a level where it doesn't call anything GCC has previous knowledge of, but that's right. usually not feasible. Have either of you tried the, the Linaro bits? Um, no, I've so far only worked from, no, well, let me th I'm, I'm not completely sure. And what are you using? Um, I'm using just upstream GCC and uh, binutils with newlib. Looks fine. 
Okay. So you're effectively you doing what Summon Arm Toolchain is doing by hand as well. Similar. Well, the Summon Arm Toolchain is just a script around upstream. Probably. Okay. Same here. Okay. Presumably build, uh, build cr uh, no, sorry, Cross Tools NG supports bare metal as well, which is presumably that, that's a more widely recognized script for doing these things than this summon thing that I've never heard of. Right. Well, the, uh, my target, I needed the M3 target, and the, and the, the dash NG stuff didn't support it when I was looking at it. Okay. And now that I'm using M0, the summon stuff doesn't support M0, so I'm using the, the, the Lenaro stuff. So I haven't gone back to look at the NG stuff to see if it's moved, moved forward at all. Uh, we've had the, the topic of um, of shipping um, compiled of shipping compiled libraries for for multi for um, for M3 and stuff um, in Debian. I think there's a relatively wide use case now that the now that ARM has opened up its CMSS library. Uh, there's a um, the, um, for, for for ARM there's a, um, a base library which abstracts away all the all the gory details of of the the interrupt co interrupt calling and stuff. And now this is free software, um, as well as some some vendors' um, peripheral libraries. So I think there are use cases for for having pre-compiled stuff, whether it's in user share ARM or whether it's in in user lib ARM, uh, user lib ARM none whatever. Yeah. But I think there are use cases for that because um, what I envision a little is um, what what I'd like for 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 Cortex M3 to happen is that I can aptitude install. Uh, Cortex tools, as I do with aptitude install Arduino, yep. and then just hack away and compile what I actually need and, and upload that. Also, do you want to be able to ship things like uh, libraries for the Cortex tools, so we'd have a, a new lib package for Cortex and a, and a PDC lib package? Definitely be nice. Um, I think for many libraries this wouldn't work because they, are, they just have too much, in, in that area, too much um, compile time options, like uh, you can't have a generic build of LWIP. Um, but for for some of the base stuff Im like like CMSIS and Mulib, I think that would work. Someone needs to try some experiments. I mean, um, the the GCC packaging is a joy to behold. Uh, if you <laughs> if you've ever looked, it's quite scary because it's very clever because it's actually it's not really a package. It's it's a, it's a it's a it's a thing for making a set of packages uh, out of one pile of source. So it's got this amazing mechanism for applying a different set of patches depending on what it was you were trying to build, right? It was all scary quilt foo. Uh, You're actually, waving your hands a lot here. Yeah, it's it's very <laughs> good actually. Uh, I mean, you know, it does mean that you can build almost any C compiler from the G the Debian source. And if there's a bit of Linaro patches missing, you just there's already a Linaro dot diff for you know which previously prized the whole ARM64 thing. Um, and now just provides a tiny bit that we're slightly out of date on. Yep. Uh, so if you need M3 patches, you just put in the M3 patches. And then somewhere, in, uh, it, there's an awful lot of mechanisms saying, what sort of compiler am I building? So the question and is, you do just we put in a rune for a very stupid one. So the question is, do we push all this off and, and get the GCC maintainers to provide us this compiler, or which would be awesome, of course. No. <laughs> uh, so the GCC maintainer will complain the moment you suggest this. Well, uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> But it's he also very won't easy. do it. So if you want to succeed in this, yeah, don't yeah, expect yeah. him to maintain it. It's this very easy to just depend at the moment on the um, source GCC package. source package, yeah. uh, just like Ming W does, okay. and just build it with the right option. So I think the, the straw man I would like to propose is so currently we, we understand that the bits that are actually different for, for building for different, um, <laughs> we have a compiler. <laughs> that's an ARM compiler, and we have cross compilers even, and, and native compilers both, that understand all the various combinations of instructions for the various ARM chips you might be targeting. And the main thing that's, that gets in our way is that GCC lib, uh, lib GCC, depends on a, a lib C of some kind in some cases. So the straw man I would propose is for somebody to, who, who's keen to look at this to figure out how we can improve the packaging and, and not make the packaging even more complex than it already is, but figure out how we can uh, let people use the existing compilers and not have to rebuild their own compiler because you don't really need a new compiler, but solve the problem of being able to drop in the, the libgcc that you need. And multilib is meant 
to deal with this, but the problem is that multi-lib requires you to centralize it, declare all your options, you end up with this lovely uh, M by N matrix of, of options in multi-lib that you don't want, really want to deal with, and the, the, the GCC maintainer doesn't want to deal with. But if we could figure out a way to split the libgcc build out, um, we could enable an awful lot of things that then you only have to worry about maintaining that little bit that's actually different, and the compiler I mean, would this would this be just a different uh, set of GCC compile time options in one of those giant GCC config files? Then yeah, it's uh, what's the file format called? I, I don't remember. Spec file is it? Yeah, you just need a GCC spec file, and you need your just. libc. Those terrify me. Oh, they're quite lovely. They they make great before bed reading. <laughs> um, the I kid. So Simon Richter has already done this like seven years ago. So we need to go and find the post that says this is what I did to make to replace the spec file and novel libgcc to make UC libc just just dynamically replace uh, gcc for your compiler. Right? You know, it has been shown to work quite a long time ago now, so everything might have changed. But in principle, I think you can do that. Uh, so I could create a new AB, uh, so I could create a new ABI target arm none eABI using the existing ARM compiler, which is apparently not ABI specific now? The compiler that we, we have in the archive knows about all the ARM ABIs. So it, it can build for any of them. Yeah, but we, have, we would have to recompile it, though. No, no. The, you just do dash M whichever one. Don't you? Wookie? I think so. Back if, me up if, here. You, if you nobbled your specs file and your libgcc correctly, yes. Right, so if you have the spec file that tells it what you actually want for, for you know, as far as like details of the spec file, it covers memory maps and everything else and, and how you assemble it, lots of linker specific stuff. I, but I in terms of knowing the ABI, any, any ARM compiler that we have in the archive knows about all subsets of that as far as I know. And there may have been bugs with like the M3 stuff or the M0 stuff that you're yeah, targeting. Yeah, the M0 was the, the, the quite, quite the surprising thing was that the... Uh, that GCC didn't gain credible M0 support till more recently. Right, but in terms of in terms of like when we build our ARM compilers, it has support for an awful lot of targets, and they're just dash M targets, just like our XC6 compiler knows to target 386, yep. 486, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing on ARM, it's just ARM is a more bountiful environment. That's a nice term. Fragmented, fractured, chaotic? Embedded. Bountiful. <laughs> I think we're about done here today. We have about five minutes. If more, a few more comments, and then we'll. Uh, so I guess the question is, I'd like if if anybody has. It sounds like one thing we need to try is to try just building a new spec file that magically uses the existing compiler and see if it works. So I was going to ask about debugging because in the ad talk outline there is Open OCD. Oh. Is that still the best thing we have for bare metal debugging? Um, I, I use two tools with ARM right now. Um, uh, STM sells a little device called the STLink V2 box. It's a little dongle. Um, and then there's an ST, STLink uh, application that talks to that and has a GDB, uh, a GDB target. So you don't have to use OpenOCD. You can use this little STLink uh, application, which is significantly smaller. Now, OpenOCD also talks to this device. And I have met, so at this point, I'm using the STLink program to do M3 debugging and the open OCD program to do M0 debugging, because I haven't gotten the other directions working for either. Um, so the, but this, the STLink program is significantly simpler and is not configured through these massive open OCD configuration files, but is instead source code. So you can actually debug when it goes wrong, which is really nice. So I don't, and that, that we should probably just package that for the archive. That would be really easy. That's just the STLink tool. It's, it's a... Uh, it's it's a, there's a, a, a GitHub repository or SourceForge I don't remember which. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, what about the bigger arms? Is there anything for that? Because with Open OCD I was really lost. Open for OCD example, is, is loses everybody because it's got this massive configuration file you have to get every bit right in. Yeah, I have this example. For example, I couldn't read when the MMU was active. I couldn't find a way to easily read from a uh, physical address in the memory. <laughs> so I had to somehow call the function that disables the MMU with single stepping. And then I was able to read physical memory. 
and then, and then you re-enable the MMU. Yeah, yeah, to do it back. So is there really nothing better tha than that in Debian for small arms that still run Linux, for example? I don't have any idea. Those well, are huge it's arms. It's not OpenOCD's fault that it's hard to read the memory, is it? It's just it's, it's just doing what it gets. Then well, the, 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 problem, the problem with OpenOCD is that it's a, well, it's not a problem and a feature of OpenOCD is it's a general, very, it's a very yeah. general purpose it's tool it that targets everything that's scripting. With marvelous config files written in TCL. Which exactly, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, so you could do it, the fact that you could do it with OpenOCD, clearly it's a flexible tool. But your, uh, your, uh, your other option is to do like the ST-Link thing did and have a custom application that targets your specific device. And I used ST-Link because OpenOCD didn't have support for the ST-Link V2 dongle. That's yeah. why I started there. I mean, if OpenOCD, if, if support for what you're doing is already in there, it's brilliant. Yep. Yeah, because somebody's already worked out all the tedious <laughs> runes. Uh, and yeah, I've had to work out tedious runes a few times, and it is quite hard work. But that's the cost of flexible tools, really. Right. So it, it to, to first order, it's probably easier to write a program for OpenOCD to talk to your chip than to write your own program to talk to your chip. So I, th I think that's what you need to look at OpenOCD is, is a debugging development system instead of a debugging system. We have one minute left. So we, ha we have at least a simple action plan to go try just building a new spec file. If that, when that fails, <laughs> um, the other option is to try to use Multi use, use the existing packaging to just make an ARM non-compiler right. um, and use that. And where would we install that? Uh, Multi-arch, or do we create a user lib ARM non EABI directory and put everything uh, into there? So the packaging will probably already put it in. Yeah, you probably want to add an architecture called non, I suppose. Uh, arm, uh, arm, arm non, arm exactly. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and then just put everything in arm non sorts of places. Okay. You don't actually need to get the architecture added to DBKG before you can install it, even if it's multi arch. Although I don't know what the multi arch spec says about that. Is it supposed to just be Debian architectures? Well, the guiding principle is that those multi-arch directories, the user lib directories, are owned by the Debian architecture. So while we would never have an ARM-none Debian architecture that I could ever foresee, it, it does seem a little bit strange to be using that directory for you know cross packages when in, in all other cases like user lib, ARM, Linux, GNU, ABI, HF, I everything you install there is an ARM HF package. So where do you want me to put it. this stuff, Steve? I would use the traditional cross-compiler path. I would and just use user slash ARM dash none slash dash libc if there is one slash. So actually create a directory in slash user or that user share? That Well, if, if that makes you feel better about it, but I mean, it's, it's really, it's all the same to me. None of the cross-compilers have ever historically complied with the FHS. Right. And we have, we have ample coverage for you in terms of existing packages that violate that. Yeah, where so would you like me to put it? We already put stuff in GCC cross, so um, we should probably just put it, I mean, I don't think that, again, those, those you know, user triplet things are for host architecture stuff, right? Not for stuff that runs on the build, the, um, the machine you're actually running your compiler on. Um, I think we should put it in the normal kinds of places and we just pick a name. Yeah, time yeah. over. The well, so we need to figure out where to stick this stuff. But I think that's something we can probably discuss with Steve over beer. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming today. And have fun with your... Oh, thanks for bringing my hardware back. <laughs> Anybody else got any more little pink bags? We'll look around. Oh, very good. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you at the bar.